2018 Harley Davidson Sport Glide, First Ride I thought my Harley Davidson days were over after I wrote a review of the 48 that was, perhaps, less than glowing. I figured that the HD folks would have crossed me off their list of journalists to test ride their bikes. I was a lost cause, so move on. Apparently I was wrong. Both the Ride Apart director Chris Cope and the HD team wanted to give me another shot on one of the new soft tails, a 2018 Sport Glide to be specific, and I was more than willing. To be honest, the 48 didn't leave a bad taste in my mouth so much as it left a may taste. It was my very first impression of a real Harley, and I was disappointed that I didn't care for the bike that much. I hope the resurrected 2018 Sport Glide had the potential to redeem my opinion of Harley Davidson's Sport Glide? I found it interesting that Harley would throw the word sport in its cruiser lineup, did I mention that I'm a HD noob? And I raised my eyebrows touch when I read the press release. New Harley Davidson Sport Glide melds street carving agility with long haul capability. All new Softail chassis and Milwaukee 8107 engine deliver a dynamic riding experience. Oh? Okay, now I'm really interested in riding this thing. At that time, I was thinking, sure you can talk the talk, but can you walk the walk, Sir Sport Glide? Back in August, Harley released eight new Softail models and a handful of new touring bikes. It withheld a Sport Glide, though as the company wanted to showcase it at ICMA earlier this month. As to why they did this, it was mainly to reach and appeal to the European audience. At present, the international market accounts for about 40% of Harley-Davidson's overall sales. The company is eager to push that closer to 50%. In order to continue to grow in that market, HD did plenty of research, and the data showed it that the international folks wanted a functional bike they could use every day. I mean, who wouldn't want that? Preconceived judgment number one, this thing will ride like a bus. As I mentioned earlier, I had a lot of preconceived biases, judgments when approaching this bike. One of them was related to ergonomics, which was one of my bigger complaints about the 48. When I hopped on the bike, one the first thing I noticed was the controls. Just like the 48, each handlebar control cluster has a button that operates the self-canceling turn signals. I also noticed that the single gauge is mounted on the 5 US gallon tank, 18.9 liters, as opposed to on the handlebars or in a permanent fairing mount, and gives you information like RPM, time, fuel level, etc. The other thing that I thought was pretty neat was the keyless ignition system. Throw the key fob in your jacket and you are able to start the bike up with the push of a button. Preconceived judgment number 2, the engine won't be exciting. I figured the engines in these bikes wouldn't really provide an exciting ride. Adding to that concern was knowledge of the famous Harley Rumble, the Milwaukee manufacturer ensures that its engines have a certain amount of character that you can feel when sitting at a stoplight. My last ride on a Harley involved a lot of shaking, and I wasn't a fan. The Milwaukee A powered Sport Glide's vibration, though, did not annoy me, hallelujah. But how can this be? For the soft tail lineup, HD added two dual counterbalancers to get rid of primary vibration at idle. At this point, I was very content as I had a bike that fit me well and didn't aggressively vibrate while riding or at idle. How could this get this better? By getting on the throttle and having the thing take off, of course. With just a small twist of the wrist, the Sport Glide lurches forward thanks to its Milwaukee 8107 engine with 108 feet to pound of torque. That small movement produced a big smile. Preconceived judgment number 3, this bike won't corner. As we headed toward the glorious Mount Baldy, I was worried, would this bike be able to handle the curves? So far, it didn't feel like riding a tractor, but I didn't trust it. Thankfully, the first section of our ride featured broad sweepers that the Sport Glide handled splendidly. Hitting the apexes on these types of turns was no problem, which made for a super fun ride. I knew that things were going to get technical soon, though, so I mentally prepared. 
I shouldn't have worried, though, I think the bike handled the corners better than I did. As we went up through tighter bends the bike shifted and turned just fine. There were a few times where I botched my entry, but, fortunately, the bike handled my mistakes as best it could. For that I was very grateful. I think you're on to something here, Harley. Preconceived judgment number 4, going over bumps is going to suck. The Sport Glide has a pretty stiff chassis due to the rigid mounted engine. This, along with the non-adjustable 43mm inverted forks, makes for a good front end feel while going through the corners. Even though the Sport Glide has a single disc front brake, which doesn't provide enough braking power if you're bombing into a corner, adding the rear brake is enough to get the bike to slow down when need be. As for the rear suspension, the Sport Glide is equipped with an all-new monoshock with remote hydraulic preload adjustment. You can set it using a knob below the right side cover of the bike, which is extremely convenient. Prior to getting on the one chosen for me, Director of Product Planning Paul James set its suspension to the lowest setting. Combined with decent front suspension, this helped settle the bike when I hit some rough pavement. I was bracing myself for the teeth-chattering thud I thought I would encounter, but the Sport Glide smoothed those out surprisingly well. Preconceived judgment number 5, I would never consider buying a Harley. We rode for a total of 80-ish miles up and down Mount Baldy before calling it a day. As we rolled into the parking lot, I had a number of good and confusing feelings happening all at once. I mean, I was never out to hate this bike but I was actually a bit surprised that I liked it as much as I did. 